think I've finally tracked down the source of our strange screeching sound from this car. Sometimes when reversing out of the garage, you'd have a little screeching sound. And the other day, after hard acceleration, the screeching sound was constant, like a sound of a brake pad. Now, it sounded like it was coming from the front, but took the wheels off, and they checked the brakes and the calipers. The calipers are new, the brake pads are new, and finally got around to taking the rear wheels off and I think we've identified the problem and um, when I took the wheel off this was all covered in brake dust here and if you have a look at the inside of the wheel you can see that that is all covered in brake dust which is normally a pretty good indication that the brake pads are locking on. Another thing I noticed when I took the brake pads out is one of the pads was much thinner than the other ones. Now these are relatively new pads, but this pad here is probably a millimetre or so thinner than the other one. So I think what was happening is the calipers in the, the old calipers with pistons were seized and was just keeping that in position and then at certain times it would come on and rub on the um, brake disc. So I'm just going to do a quick video about how to change the calipers on one of these 107 SLs. Now, the first thing to notice is you can actually buy repair kits for these calipers, i.e. pistons and seals and all the rest of it. But you can also get these um, calipers often from your normal parts store. This, we're based in the UK and this came from German, Swedish, French or GSF car parts. And if you trade your old caliper in, um, which you get a £40 discount if you do that, you end up paying £87 for this new caliper um, for next day delivery. So basically, rather than trying to refurb the other caliper, I'm just going to put a new caliper on this car. I think the other one was over 20 years old. Um, and the calipers are basically just held on with these two bolts here. At the back, you've got to remember when you put the bolts back in to put some blue thread lock in. Um, and these look to have a clip on them that will spring out and then the pads will just slip in and it should be a five minute job. Well, I was hoping that to, I was going to be able to avoid draining all the brake fluid out but I haven't managed to do that. My Heath Robinson didn't work so we're just going to have to top up the fluid and just bleed some of the brake fluid out the bottom valve. What I'm going to do is take out the cap here and we're going to screw that fitting we're going to basically screw the caliper onto that fitting first. Just going to be careful not to twist the hose when you do this. Um, it's a 14 mil fitting. Okay, once you've done that, it should just be a matter of bolting this back onto the um, hub. Now this particular style of caliper comes with those protective clips and I imagine you have to take those out before you put the caliper on because it'll be pretty difficult to get those off once the caliper's on. The one thing you have to be careful about is that once you take those clips off the pistons don't come popping out so let's just take one of the clips off and see how that goes. Now I've never actually changed one of these calipers before this is a Brembo one so I've never seen one of these clips I think they just come off by wedging a screwdriver behind there like so we'll soon find out. Well we eventually got that out without damaging the seals on the caliper I imagine that just kind of pops out but maybe it screws out I'm not sure but anyway it wasn't easy to get out it's probably easy if you know what you're doing but we just very very gently pried it out with a flat blade screwdriver without damaging the seals and using a set of mole grips it must be an easier way to get these out but i have to confess i have not found it yet we just use a little bit of brute force without damaging the pistons you just have to use all your strength to push these pistons back in now and then get the brake pads in now these two bolts here and here which hold the caliper on they can be quite stiff to get in because they'll have had thread lock on so what I normally do is I locate them both and then I'm going to tighten one of the bolts up I'm going to tighten them both up and then I'm going to take one of the bolts out 
um, that way I'll know that the caliper's in the right place and then I'm going to put the blue thread lock on and then I'm going to put that bolt back in and then I'm going to take the other bolt out and put the blue thread lock on that one and talk them up to the right um, spec which I'll just put in the comments below. Tighten both of these bolts up, not to spec but just tight so that we know this is definitely in the right place. Now we're going to slot the um, brake pads in. These are new brake pads I'm putting in. It just so happened that when we bought these hubs, they came with new brake pads. And what we'll do is, um, although I think the brake pads are actually pretty good on the other side, we will replace both sets of brake pads. And once we've got the pads in, we just need to put the clips in. Make sure we get it the right way around pad clip in like so and then put the pins in what you want to do first is locate these brake pads with the pins before you put the clip in just so just make sure that the holes are lined up like so and the pins go through it's a lot easier to do that than try and put the clip on and do it the other way around and now comes the fiddly bit of getting the clip in the clip goes this way around so that the pins lying in that groove doesn't matter which pin you start with um, we'll start with the bottom pin okay now we just need to tap them in lightly sometimes it's a good idea to use a pair of pliers or metal or something to bash these pins in properly um, so that you don't end up bashing this. Now, it's a good idea to put a little bit of copper slip or some kind of high temperature grease, just a very small amount on these pins before you put them in so you'll be able to get them out at some stage. And also on the back of the brake pads, you can put a little bit of high temperature um, grease, just a tiny amount to stop the pads sticking and to stop them squeaking. Theory, all I need to do now is pop this rubber cap off, crack that bleed valve there, and just get we'll put a little tube on the end of it so we can see and um, when the, all the air bubbles have gone. So let's get a little tube. Okay, we've just attached a tube to that, just putting it in our overflow container here. I'm going to crack that now there, and we're going to start adding some. Um, brake fluid to the reservoir and the bonnet. On this particular bleed valve, it's a nine mil spanner that you're gonna need. Okay, we're gonna be adding dot four synthetic brake fluid. So we've taken the cap off, I'm just gonna top that up. And then when we pump the brake pedal, we should see fluid getting pushed through there. Yeah, I've got our tube. In this bottle here, just put a centimetre of brake fluid in there and the tube is below the surface. And that way we should be able to see the bubbles coming through, but not suck up any more air into the system. Just see some air bubbles coming out of there. The brake pedal wedged down with a piece of wood. And I'm now going to just tighten this up. And I'm going to release the brake pedal. Now when we release the brake pedal now, we can't suck up any more. We just have to check that we've got plenty of brake fluid in there. And um, we're sort of parked on a slight angle at the moment, so it's difficult to tell. What we'll do is we'll tighten all the bolts up, put the car back flat, and then double check you're happy you've bled that part of the brake system, put the rubber cap back on, and the next thing we're gonna do is just put some thread lock on these two caliper bolts. So put a dab of the blue thread lock on this caliper bolt, and then tighten that up. Next up, we're just gonna put the wheel back on. These bolts are torqued up to 120 Newton meters. Just before we do put the wheel on, I've mentioned this before, but my advice would be not to jack the car up with your jacking tube unless you're pretty confident that you've got no rust issues in there or that that's been attended to. What I always do is 
jack it up just below there with a piece of wood with a section cut out of it so that this lip sits inside. You can also get circular round things off eBay that you can use. So I will jack the car up on the um, rear subframe mount. As soon as it's off the ground, just use a um, jack stand like that to support the car and keep the jack there as well, just in case one of these two fails. The final talking up of those bolts once we've left the, let the car down. on a crisscross pattern when you're putting them on. So that's the brakes done. Just ready for a test drive. Show sure you up for this?